967 K Cal Rocks. Good morning. It is Patrick and 40 on your Monday. Let's talk some sports with our guy. Pep. What's going on, Pep? Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning, everybody. This is it. Final week of the NFL preseason. And as we cut down to that 53-man roster for the NFL regular season, you know, all these teams have to make cuts. But here's some good news. We've got some guys trying to make some NFL teams from our local Inland Empire area, and they had some great weekends. Just a quick shout-out here for J.J. Taylor, Centennial High School running wow. back with the New England Patriots. He had a huge game, including a touchdown. We had yeah, Javon yeah. McKinley, 40. He's another Centennial guy. He's a receiver for the Detroit Lions. He caught his first NFL touchdown. And then Troy Dye, who's a linebacker out of Norco High School, he had a pick six for the Minnesota Vikings. So our oh, IE yeah. guys making their case to be on that that 53-man roster when the season begins uh, for the regular season for the NFL. They had great weekends. It was very bittersweet when I watched not only the whole New England Patriots team destroy the Philadelphia Eagles, but to see <laughs> Centennial's own J.J. Taylor just ripping it up against the team I've loved my whole life. Yeah, it's like if anyone's going to do it, I guess it's right. right. At least, at least he's from Corona. At least he's from Centennial. But come on, take it easy on the Eagles. Please, please. We're back. Yeah, you know, I figured that would be the case when we brought this game up for you being the big Eagles fan. But yeah, J.J. Ooh. Taylor had a huge game against Philadelphia. So I'm sure you were torn. It was bittersweet for you. <laughs> I, I figured he was going to do it. I'm glad it was him. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, congrats to these guys, man. Great weekend for our local guys as the uh, NFL preseason is wrapping up this week. Um, we saw the Raiders hold on against the Rams, a wild game that went down to the finish, 17-16. But again, you know, all that star power, not in that preseason game for the Rams or the Silver and Black uh, this past weekend. And then last night, okay, the 49ers beat the Chargers 15-10. And again, a lot of the backups seen playing time. But Trey Lance, the backup quarterback, I guess you could say for the 49ers right now, making his case to pass up and leapfrog Jimmy G, Jimmy Garoppolo, as the number one, as they say, QB1 now, right? As that starting quarterback for the 49ers, he had two touchdown passes against the Lightning Bolts. Right, one of them was to kind of a wide-open dude, which was a nice little throw, but the other one, which is why he's gaining so much attention, I think, is he really threaded the needle. It was a really powerful throw in between, like, three defenders and put it right in his uh, guy's chest, and it was a touchdown. So I was like, Oop, that was an NFL throw. It does seem like there is more of those situations where the number two is very close to the number one <sighs> in terms of the starting quarterbacks, and, like, a lot of the number twos are the young guys that the fans are going to want to see. So it's going to be an interesting year to see the pressure that the fans can put on their teams to get the quarterback they want in. You guys know how it works. If that starting quarterback stumbles, the roar starts and it gets loud. San Francisco is a big one. New England's another one. Chicago's another one. There's, there's a few of these situations around there. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, like, let's say one of these young quarterbacks does not, um, you know, win the starting job to start the year. How long does a team wait to bring him in, especially if things go sideways? If you are 1-5, in 0-4, oh you know, 1-6, in six, like how long do you wait? And you're like, okay, we got to give the fans something to get excited about because things are not going well. This will re-energize, you know, the, the, the franchise and the fan base. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on, you know, through the first couple of weeks of the season because there are some great young quarterbacks waiting in the wings right now. And a big part of it, though, is the recipe to win a Super Bowl is get that young quarterback playing as soon as possible and get him on the cheap because that's the only way you can afford a whole team. Right. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson. I mean, Patrick Mahomes got paid, but you know what I mean? If you can get a couple really good years while they're on their rookie contract, you can spend your money elsewhere and load up elsewhere right. with some great talent. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of the, the magic formula right now, the recipe, right, to, to get to – that championship, that Super Bowl contender status. It's true. So we'll see what these young quarterbacks do. But yeah, final week of the NFL preseason. Uh, if you want a reason to watch, guys are fighting for jobs. And uh, maybe we will see some of these young quarterbacks get a couple snaps um, before we get to the regular season. Guys, college football also starts this weekend. Not, every play, not everybody's playing this weekend, but UCLA is. And they're taking on Hawaii in their season opener. And... Forty, I go back to you because you're a Philadelphia Eagles guy. You're, a, you know, former head coach Chip Kelly now at UCLA. The clock is ticking on this guy to win, to win at UCLA. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's going to be so good. Everybody, I, I keep hearing with UCLA is like, let him get time, let him get his players, let him get established. How many years are we going to do that before we just realize, as a former Eagle player or Eagle fan, I'm saying this, he's above. 
Uh oh. Get him out of there. Uh -oh. Forty's calling it already. Like Forty said, though, this is supposed to be Chip's guys. These are his first recruits. So if it's going to work, this is his only chance. It seems like Chip, without the backing of Nike behind him in Oregon, has nothing going on. Hmm. <laughs> and you know, this is the time because, listen, USC's got a good team. Oregon's got a good team. Washington's got a good team. But no one's really dominating the Pac 12 right now. If, right. if you wanted to say it was wide open, I would totally buy in say, yes, the Pac-12 is open. There's probably five or six teams that could really make a run and win the Pac-12 championship. Like, no one is just running away with it. So if UCLA and Chip Kelly had a chance, it's wide open right now. But, the, you know, the time is now. The time is now for right. Chip Kelly and the Bruins. And it starts starts on Saturday in Hawaii. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. And they got LSU right after that. So it's not going to get any easier. Uh, for I like that LSU's coming down here to SoCal. That's going to be a good game. I like that. Take it on a should, big dog. It should be, right? The SEC coming to the Rose Bowl, you know, LSU playing. So, but yeah, if UCLA can get a big win against Hawaii, build some confidence, do some things that make them feel good about themselves before they see LSU on September 4th, that would be huge for the Bruins. Because that's a huge game. Uh, Absolutely. To to baseball, guys, the Dodgers had their nine-game winning streak snapped by the Mets last night, uh, yesterday, 7-2. to two, So they're still two and a half games back of the Giants. But the Dodgers actually have the second most wins in all, all of Major League Baseball. The only problem is the Giants have more. And that's the team they're trying to chase <laughs> down in the division. So uh, the Giants with 80 wins now, the first team to 80 wins in all of baseball. Uh, but help is on the way for the Dodgers. Um, I know they're playing well. Again, they had a nine-game win streak going. But Joe Kelly, our guy from... Corona High School from UC Riverside on a rehab right. assignment with the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes. He pitched some on Friday. He pitched again uh, last night out there in Rancho Cucamonga. So Joe Kelly, uh, one of our Inland Empire guys, will soon be rejoining the Dodgers. The NFL, MLB. I mean, I like the fact that Joe Kelly, we announced, we crowned him as the defender of baseball ethics. Yes. I like the way that he goes after a lot of what the purists seem to love. You need an IE guy to do that Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. And, and I think the Quakes even tweeted something out. Um, hey, Joe Kelly, it was great to see you out here in the Inland Empire. Um, we didn't get your pouty face. But it's okay. We, we, we still love it. He didn't have to, right? You know, he was looking good. Right. He was on the mound doing some good things. He wasn't facing the Houston Astros. It was all good. It, we did not get the Joe <laughs> Kelly pouty face. Uh, and one other quick Dodgers note, guys. Speaking of Joe Kelly coming back soon for the Dodgers, Mookie Betts will hopefully return to the Dodgers later this week. He's going to play one of those fake simulated games down in Arizona. Uh, but there was some chatter like, hey, could we see Mookie Betts? making a rehab assignment uh, for the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes. But the Quakes are on the road, so they'll probably, you know, so if Quakes were home in Southern California, it might be a different story. But it looks like Mookie Betts will play some of those fake simulated games and then rejoin the Dodgers when they play the Padres later this week. Uh, Pep, I do have a baseball question for you. I know this is kind of a sticky situation, but do you know, have you heard anything about Trevor Bauer? Just that he's still on administrative leave, you know what I mean? Like they just keep right. extending it, extending it, right. extending it as he goes through this, you know, off the field legal battle. Yeah, yeah you like, saw, I think there's no end in sight, and there's rumors that the Dodgers don't even really want him back in the clubhouse. They want him ooh, to stay away. I mean, I guess he got found innocent, though the judge threw out the case. So I mean, if the judge threw out the case, unless there's an appeal going on, I mean. Technically, he hasn't done anything wrong legally. Does that mean he can come back to the, to the team? Is, uh, is Major League Baseball like the NFL where they will still discipline players for, um, what do they call it, like tarnishing the shield, even if you are not right. found guilty and something like that? If you've done enough damage to the brand, essentially, they can still discipline you. Is baseball the same way? Like making baseball look bad. Right. Yeah. So they'll get you. Maybe that's it. Yeah. And, and that's I mean, it, too, it like... just happened, though. It yeah, just happened. The, and I don't uh, think baseball is just, baseball's not necessarily punishing him at this point, but they are telling him to just stay away. Like, don't right. don't be around the club. Don't be around the team. Let's let's figure out what what this is going to look like. How you know how's this all going to play out? Just just stay away for now until we figure out what we want to do. That's what it yeah, looks like know, right now from the outside. They know it's going to be a big deal when he comes back. Yeah, it is. It is going to be a big deal. And finally, guys, the Angels played the Indians yesterday, and they lost 3-0. But the big story here was they played in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, the home of the Little League World Series. And they actually played a game out there, the Little League Classic. They wore, I guess you'd say, Little League-style uniforms um, <laughs> out there. The kids got to hang out and get autographs. Uh, so that was a cool deal uh, for the Angels out there uh, with, with, uh, with Cleveland to play that Little League World Series Classic game, where it all starts for all these guys, right? The Little League. 
And then to see all those kids clamoring around Shohei Otani, it was very cool. Those kids were so pumped and excited, as they should be. Yeah, I mean, he's the biggest thing going in baseball right now. Oh, he's so hot right now. These kids were just losing their minds. It was really cool. Yeah, he was the headliner and even a, a Mike Trout sighting out there. He didn't play yet, but he, he was out there with the kids. Trout's back. Come on, get on the field, Trout. <laughs> Yeah, yeah they, somebody get your stuff. They could use him back. You can check us out on Inland Sports on social media, the Inland Sports YouTube channel. We got some video of Joe Kelly pitching in Rancho Cucamonga. Check it out. That's nice. Inland Sports. Thanks, Pat.